Welcome everyone, this is Leia Lin Kay, and today, here we are with another lesson, and our topic is creative writing. With this video, we are expected to learn about the purpose of creative writing, forms of writing, types of creative writing, techniques in creative writing, and of course, the difference between creative writing and technical writing, as well as sensory experience and language used in creative writing. Now, let us begin with defining what is creative writing. So, when we say creative writing, creative writing is a form of writing where Creativity is the forefront of its purpose through using imagination, creativity, and innovation in order to tell a story. Through strong written visuals with an emotional impact like poetry writing, short story writing, novel writing, and more. So another, when we say creative writing, it is any writing that goes outside the bounds of normal, professional, um, journalistic, academic, or technical forms of literature, typically identified by an emphasis on narrative craft, character development, and the use of literary tropes, or with various traditions of poetry and poetics. Let us know the purpose of creative writing. So first, we have here is to entertain of course one purpose of creative writing is to entertain since it provides us amusement or enjoyment another is to inform to inform because it provides essential information which is intertwined with our imagination or with fiction okay and then third one is to persuade so to persuade since it gives us different perf perspective from a different person's point of view or a character which can influence how we live life, gaining a broad perspective of society through the eyes of another. And of course, we have here to share human experience. So another purpose of creative writing is to share human experience wherein uh, we become sensitive and empathetic towards others because it teaches us to appreciate what it means to be human as well as what it means to live and to live well. So that is the purpose of creative writing. And for the next is the four main types of writing, which are the expository, persuasive, narrative, and descriptive. So first, the expository. Writing in which author's purpose is to inform or explain the subject to the reader. Or, it is writing that seeks to explain, illuminate, or expose, which where the word expository comes from. For examples are magazines and news articles. Next, the persuasive. Writing that states the opinion of the writer and attempts to influence the reader, or intends to convince readers to believe in an idea or opinion and to do an action. For examples are the brochures and advertisement. Next, the narrative. Writing in which authors tell a story. The story could be fact or fiction. It can be essay, fairy tales, or jokes. And the last, the descriptive writing. A type of expository writing that uses the five senses to paint a picture for the reader. This writing incorporates imagery and specific details. And the types of creative writing, which are the poetry, plays, movie and television scripts, fiction such as novels, novellas, and short stories songs, speeches, memoir, and personal essays. And we have also techniques used in creative writing. First, the character development. A process of building a unique three-dimensional character with depth, personality, and clear motivations. Next, the plot development. 
It means ensuring that your novel contains what makes stories enjoyable to read. The next one is the vivid setting. Makes your fiction more believable. And for the underlying theme, it is the message that the writer is trying to convey through the story. And the next one is the point of view. It is the eye or narrative voice through which you tell a story. And the next one is the dialogue. It is textual representation of spoken words and conversation within most work of creative writing. The next one is the anecdotes. It is a brief story used to make a large point. And the figure of speech. Metaphors and similes are also included in figure of speech. It is a word or phrase that depart from literal language to express comparison, add emphasis or clarity, or make writing more interesting with the addition of color and freshness. Next, the Im imaginative language. It is the language of imagination contrived to create through its appeal to the imagination. And the second to the last is the emotional appeal. It is directed to sway an audience, members' emotions, and manipulation of the re recipient's emotions. And the last, the heavy description. To imply or describe something to be more interesting. Now we have here the distinctive characteristics of creative writing and technical writing. In creative writing, it focuses on imaginative and symbolic content, while in technical writing, it focuses on factual and straightforward content. In creative writing, it has general reader or audience. Technical writing has its specific reader or audience. The purpose of creative writing is to entertain, provoke, or inspire. The purpose of technical writing is to inform and instruct and educate the user. In creative writing, it follows informal and artistic style of writing. In technical writing, it follows formal and standard style of writing. In creative writing, it gives readers a theme, message, moral, or lesson which is helpful in their real lives or gives a temporary entertainment to the reader. In technical writing, it gives readers information about some technical topics or it gives directions on how to do something. Next, in creative writing, it uses narrative elements such conflict, character, theme, setting, and resolution. In technical writing, it uses text features like the table of content, index, label charts, photos, and graphs. In creative writing, the tone is subjective. Meanwhile, the tone of technical writing is subjective. It is, or in creative writing, it is based on general evocative vocabulary. In technical writing, it is based on specialized vocabulary. In creative writing, it is organized in an arbitrary and artistic manner and may not be systematic. Meanwhile, in technical writing, it is organized in a sequential and systematic manner. In creative writing, Graphics are included to give more attraction to the topic. In technical writing, graphics are included to give more information to the topic. Creative writing depends on the schedule and mindset of the writer. Technical writing depends on any result, research, information, etc. The next one is sensory experience or sensory details. So, sensory experience makes a story memorable. Why? Because it appears to our five senses. These sensory details include sound, touch, smell, and taste. So, writers employ five senses to engage a reader's interest. With sensory details, readers can personally experience what the author is trying to describe. Okay? So, that is sensitive experience so here is an example of a 
passage with sensory details entitled, A Trip to the Grocery Store. So let me read it for you. Upon entering the grocery store, I headed directly for the flower department, where I spotted yellow tulips as I tenderly rested the tulips in my rusty shopping cart i caught a whiff of minty dried eucalyptus so i added the fragrant forest green bouquet of eucalyptus to my cart while heading for the meat department i smelled the stench of seafood which made my appetite disappear so that is a passage with sensory details can you identify which sensory details are in the passage now we move on to the language used in creative writing. First is imagery. Imagery is a literary device that refers to the use of figurative language to evoke a sensory experience or create a picture with words for a reader. <clears throat> By utilizing effective descriptive language and figures of speech, writers appeal to the reader's senses of sight, taste, smell, touch, and sound, as well as internal emotion and feelings. Therefore, imagery is not limited to visual representations or mental images, but also includes physical sensations and internal emotions. Next is figures of speech. A figure of speech or rhetorical figure is a word or phrase that entails an intentional deviation from ordinary language use in order to produce a rhetorical effect. The following are the examples of figures of speech. First is simile which is a figure of speech that involves a comparison of one thing with another, with another thing of a different kind used to make a description more emphatic or vivid. Next is metaphor, which is a figure of speech that describes an object or action in a way that it isn't literally true but help explain an idea or make a comparison. <clears throat> Next is personification, which is the attribution of a personal nature or human characteristics to something non-human or the representation of an abstract quality in human form. Another one is paradox, which is a statement or proposition that seems self-contradictory or absurd but in reality expresses a possible truth. Next is understatement, a figure of speech employed by writers or speakers to intentionally make a situation seem less important than it really is. Next, metonymy which is the substitution of a name of an attribute or adjunct for that of the thing meant. Next is apostrophe. As a literary device, an apostrophe is a poetic phrase or speech made by a character that is addressed to a subject that is not literally present in the literary work. Lastly, we have here the hyperbole, or the exaggeration of statements or claims not meant to be taken literally. Some Poets and Their Works First, we have Charles John Hotham Dickens, known as Charles Dickens, an English novelist generally considered the greatest of the Victorian era. A Christmas Carol is a Victorian morality tale of an old and bitter miser, Ebenezer Scrooge, who undergoes a profound experience of redemption over the course of one evening. Next is Joanne Kathleen Rowling, pen name of J.K. Rowling. A British author, creator of the popular and critically acclaimed Harry Potter series about a young sorcerer in training. Harry Potter is a series of seven fantasy novels written by British author J.K. Rowling. The novels chronicle the lives of a young wizard Harry Potter and his friends Hermione Granger and Ron Weasley, all of whom are students at Hogwarts School of witchcraft and wizardry. Next, we have Jose de la Cruz, a great poet here, also known as Jose Sisi, is believed to be the writer of Ibong Adarna. This amazing folklore is about love, sacrifice, and fantasy. Ibong Adarna literally means Adarna bird. The story centers about catching the mythical bird that possesses magical powers. The Adarna bird is so beautiful and could change in a lot of stunning forms. It is very much hard to catch. It knows a total of 7 songs which could either enchant anyone to sleep, turn into stone, or heal a deadly sickness. 